Okay, hi everybody. I promised you I'd come out live. So am I live? Is anybody there? Give me a shout. I just wanted to report into you because, oh, there you are. Okay, it works. I'm becoming a professional now at learning how to use this technology. I hope you're impressed. So here I am. I wanted to let you know that I am alive and kicking despite uh, all of your concern for what I went through on my trip. And thank you so much for sending all your healing and all your love. And let me just say that uh, it was a struggle. But as most of my life is uh, teaching, 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 there was definitely a lot that I learned from this experience. So the first thing which I've put out to you already in uh, writing on Facebook is how the process of letting myself heal myself, how important it was and how powerful it was. And I wanna share with you what I went through it just amazes me that I still am able to laugh about it because here I was. Actually, we had this wonderful reunion in London with uh, a, a beautiful group of people, including you, Sally. I see you're there. And uh, thank you for checking in. And there was someone seated next to me at this event that actually I didn't know who he was, who was very, very ill and coughing and breathing on me profusely. And I'm pretty sure that's where I got the book. That combined with the absolutely unhealthy London air did me in. So by the time I got to the freezing Arctic, um, well, first I went to Bergen after London, beautiful little city, uh, right on the water, beautiful, should have been just a, a wonderful time. But I was determined to go out and explore, even though I wasn't feeling well, and um, that's when I had the camera shop incident. So I thought I'd share this with you. Do you want to hear it? Say yes if you want to hear my story about the camera shop because it's another time slip. And um, they seem to be happening more. And I just, hi, Linda, thank you. I love you too. I just have this feeling that I'm being just taken to the limits of multi-dimensional crash course awakening for uh, purposes that most likely have to do with my work with the council and my own spiritual journey also but I just feel that it's supposed to be shared so um, here goes if you haven't heard it or I think I just wrote very briefly what happened on Facebook but I want to share it it's just remarkable I got to this city of Bergen feeling pretty punk and decided that, all right, at least I'm going to go out, see a little bit of the, the city, the town, and then, you know, dive into bed. And I walked by this um, camera shop and thought, okay, I'm all ready to go. I've got my Nikon. I've got my lens. I've got my, my um, what do you call it? Tripod. But what I don't have <laughs> Because the whole objective of this trip, I mean, one of the big objectives of this trip was to photograph the Northern Lights and share that with everyone. So I'm walking by this camera shop, which is closed, and I'm thinking, I actually need a shutter, remote shutter clicker, so that when I try to catch the Northern Lights, the camera doesn't move. And Oh, it's fun to see you too, Candace. Well, at least to see you uh, tuned in. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I get distracted. Okay, so like I said, I'm looking at this closed store thinking, really do need to get a shutter clicker. I'm coming back here tomorrow. I'm getting this clicker. Okay, shop was closed. I went back to the hotel, etc. Next day, I go to the, hotel, the, to the uh, photography store. And I walk in, and before I can even say anything, the guy says, ah, you came back for the clicker. You can, you decided to get the, the remote clicker. And I, I said, excuse me? How did you know that I need a clicker? He goes, it was a Nikon, right? 
And he's over at the wall looking through these gadgets to pick out the right remote uh, clicker, for lack of a better word, shutter clicker for me. I said, excuse me, how did you know that I, I was coming for, for that? He goes, well, I'm the, I'm the one who helped you yesterday. It was me. It's like, okay. And this was a very, let's say, the Northern Europeans are rather left brain types. So, and that's not in, in, meant to be an offense to anyone or, or a generalization, but this was a was sort of left brain camera shop guy. I wasn't about to start talking about parallel realities and time slips with him, but something happened again. And I'd love to open a dialogue about this. I mean, this man experienced me coming into the shop and he was so adamant about it. He said, I was the one that helped you. And I said, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not feeling very well. I must have slipped my mind. And so here I am being put in a situation where I'm seeing once again this time slip uh, parallel reality situation going on. And more things have happened. One of them... I, it, I need to keep private. It's very personal. But the point is, uh, how do you interpret this? I mean, are we, are we, I'm concerned, first of all, because I have a lot of experience with psychic things, as you know. So I have a framework to, to, to come to this with some experience of having the psychic experience of the psychic vision. But for the masses, for people who don't, What's going to happen when this starts to be a frequent occurrence as we slip into this four dimensional reference? And I'm just curious. I mean, some of you have said, yes, I am also experiencing these things. And probably if you're connected with me, you're of the same mindset as I am. But what about the people who are not? What happens when this starts to did just just disintegrate this dimension. I uh, I have some concerns about this, and of course the council say, "Don't worry about it. Everybody's it's it's all rising, so uh, everything will unfold as it should." But boy, oh boy, I'm telling you, it's getting slippery out here in the mental field of multi-dimensional reality. So, what are your comments about this? Tell me what you think about what I'm saying. <laughs> Yay for Nikon. <laughs> Thank you, Alyssa. So that was uh, an interesting way to start the journey. And uh, as you know, I got sick. I, I got sick in London for sure. And I spent several days on this cruise in bed with a fever. The night light, the northern lights are raging above the ship like never before, the cruise director said. And uh, I couldn't, I couldn't possibly get up and see them. And then finally, I decided, well, fever or no fever, yeah, I'm not going to miss these northern lights. So I went out on deck, bundled up like Nanook of the North with all of my gear. And <sighs> words cannot express what I saw in that sky. It was a life-changing, another life-changing moment. Just this vaulted ceiling of sky with these primarily green because the apparently the the more vivid colors are more easily seen through a camera lens than with the human eye but it it was just all worth it as far as being sick and on the ship and whatever all worth it to see what i saw i'm so grateful that i had that experience and I really wish I could have captured it for you, but uh, I just couldn't get together the camera, the, the button, the pod, the tripod, and all the gear that it would have taken to do it. And no doubt, by the time I had gotten back up, they would have been gone. So uh, I do want you to know that I did get that gift. And even though, <coughs> excuse me, um, I had to have the flu to get it, I did get it. So I think there are some very powerful things going on here for me personally. And uh, hi, me Shiva. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Um, 
It's supposed to be a vacation. It really wasn't. It was another initiatory journey, which seems to be my path in this life. And uh, for those of you who, who read about what I saw for the Huskies, I am going to now prepare a uh, complaint for the International Humane Society. And I'm going to ask for, I'll probably prepare a, um, a petition. I'm going to ask you all to read it carefully and hopefully sign it and help me get some help for those huskies. I mean, you know that I don't like to uh, deal or dwell on animal suffering, but rather to, to do what I can about it. And this was so inhumane. I mean, these dogs are chained with a, with a yard of chain. It's 20 below. And they say, oh, they're bred for that. And I was like, oh, really? Okay. They sure didn't look like they were warm and fluffy. And they're chained to these little cabins they have, uh, little wooden cabins with some filthy um, hay. It's too cold to give them bowls of water so they eat ice. And they never, unless they're taken off the chain for their duty run, they're never off these chains. This is not acceptable to me. And um, while I'm complaining about that, I do also want to say that Norway has whale meat on all the restaurant menus. Hi, Philip. Thank you for coming in. All of the menus in the restaurants, a lot of the, let's say, the, as I walked by, there were male, whale burgers, whale steaks on the menus. And this is not acceptable to me. So the reason why I'm telling you all this is because I had hinted that perhaps I would be taking a group to next year to Norway to see the nights, but I will not return to Norway for these reasons. I don't approve of whale meat. I mean, a country that is as beautiful as Norway, and it is so beautiful, that um, is so aware of nature on, on some levels, and on others are still eating whales, still killing whales. When, when you have this abundance of food, not that any other animal is less important, but surely knowing uh, the condition of the whales, there are other alternatives. So I'm not going back to Norway. And I'm not telling you not to go, but I am not ever going back to a country that kills whales. So that's that. Um, I just think I, I just wanted to say hello and let you know that I'm, I, you can hear I sound like gravel Gertie, but I, I really, <coughs> okay, so I'm reading Candace Craw writes, focus on the now, because if we focus on the linear, we stay there. Candace, I don't know what you mean by that. Please elucidate what you're saying. <clears throat> What do you mean, Candace? Uh, for me, this is the now. It's uh, seeking justice, as I interpret it, um, is how I live my life. And I feel that these are aspects that are unjust, and therefore I have to deal with them. So that said, I still had managed to have a, a <laughs> A wonderful journey. I did get out and, and into the ice cold sub zero. Candace writes, they will dismiss these anomalies. I'm not following you, Candace. Please speak more, less metaphorically so I can address what you're saying. Um, let's see what else. Hi, Alan. Thanks for coming, coming in. Boy, there's a lot of you plugging in. Thank you. It's nice to see your response. Okay, so meanwhile, I am back. I'm still a little, uh, well, you can see. I'm not my adorable self. <laughs> I need rest and uh, a little bit more healing. But, ah, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, of course. I started to talk about that. The, the natural healing and Somebody wrote something beautiful on Facebook who said, um, 
it takes courage to trust your body to heal itself. And it does take courage because we're so bombarded with all of this, you know, the, the drill, the big pharma push to keep us as medicated as possible on all, at all times and to, to be vaccinated as much as possible as is possible. And so what happens is in the case of this flu, which is rough, you, you're probably going to be sick for seven to 10 days with a cold or flu, no matter what you take for it, no matter how much NyQuil or, or we won't even talk about antibiotics, you're going to have to deal with it. And I've always dealt with colds in this way, go to bed, let the body burn it out. Nice, nice fever, trust the fever and let it happen. And then um, what happens is you get to about day five and you feel like hell. So you acquiesce to the doctors and they say, we better give you antibiotics because this could turn into a, bar a bronchial infection. And there you go. And then by day seven or eight, you're starting to feel better and you think it's the antibiotics, but it's not. It's the run or the course of the illness or virus or whatever we're going to call it. So uh, to reiterate what I've been putting on Facebook, I, uh, I use this wonderful product, which is high. Let me see if I can get it into frame. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Okay. It is glasses. Argent Ionico Colloidal Silver, 40 ppm, uh, made by Instituto. Catharo, catharo.com. And uh, I'm pretty sure that that's what kept me from getting really, really, really sick. And I recommend that you get some of this colloidal into your medical, your alternative medicine collection and Manuka honey. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. And then, you know, let your body, give your body a chance to heal it. Because more than ever now, we need to build the immune system and I'm reading care at Candace again. You think my energy is okay then, huh? <laughs> it is. I'm fine. Okay. So here I am back in my wonderful home. You see the lights out in the back, my breathtaking view. It's amazing. I, I've always been a world traveler. And um, when I was living in Italy, I loved Italy, but... I was never thrilled to go back. I, I had fantasies of living. One day I wanted to live in Luxor. The next day I wanted to live in Paris. And uh, But now that I live in this beautiful island, Fayal, it's a dream. And I always want to be here. So um, maybe my Indiana Jones days are winding down a bit. And I'm going to spend more time in paradise. Um, thank you, Karen. Karen Michelle Rosler wrote, I love the beautiful haunting picture you took of the sled dog on his house with his name on it, tugged at my heart. It did mine too, uh, Karen, which is why I'm going to, you know, let me just say this about being an activist. It's very painful to have to feel these things. It's painful to feel pain. I mean, that's kind of an oxymoron. But what I mean is, as an empathic psychic, and I know so many of you know what I'm talking about, you feel the pain, you feel it in your body. It's not just emotional, you actually feel the physical pain. And um, so I'm an animal activist and an empathic psychic. And that pain, uh, it takes a long time for me to be able to release it. I think that, uh, on the other hand, it helps me be empowered to do what I have to do to try to help. So um, I'm going to turn that pain, as I think I normally do, into positive action and uh, let it drive whatever I need to do to at least... Um, 
put my soul at rest that at least I'm doing what I can to uh, to call attention to the plight of these these dogs. Uh, I've got a question here. What does the council say about how to manage our own energy as the time slips speed up and become more frequent? The <laughs> Excuse me again. <laughs> uh, the, the message from the council that is the, the overriding message at all times is to be in humility and to be grounded. And as we are being bombarded with phantasmagorical information of every genre when it comes to multidimensional information and uh, ET information and parallel worlds, etc., cetera, uh, there's a lot of, you know, I'm going to beat this drum until you're tired of hearing it, but uh, so will I, so will I do. There is a lot of ego attached to a lot of the information that's out there, and a lot of it is fantasy and phant phantasmagorical at best. So, again, you know, how do we cope with this? Um, be as grounded as you possibly can, and that requires work now and it's going more it's going to require more as we move forward in the next couple of years as i see this speeding up for me i'm sure it's speeding up for everyone but uh for me it's like okay uh <laughs> the camera shop this is just not that long ago that i had the the experience of the italian visitors that's described in the new syrian revelations so this was another time slip situation. And I'm not, again, I'm not quite sure. It doesn't fit into any um, psychic experience I've had for most of my life. This is new stuff, this slipping. And as much as possible, uh, I've got an, a, an objection to my whale meat comment. So let me just finish this thought. Um, as much as possible, recognize these events when they happen and maybe even write them down and run them through your mind, run them through your experience and ask the questions. What exactly am I experiencing here? What just happened here? And uh, as much as possible, work on grounding yourself because it's going to get pretty slick out there on the space time continuum. Simon writes, I am Norwegian. It is not that common to serve whale meat in the restaurant. Uh, Simon, I beg to differ. And, you know, please don't be offended as, as a Norwegian because, uh, like I said, it's a beautiful country and I've met some lovely people. But every restaurant, every seafood restaurant that I passed in Bergen had whale meat on the menu. So I couldn't eat anywhere. Then there's the reindeer meat. Um, but you know, whale meat is, is just not acceptable to me and it is to whoever is eating it and whoever is serving it in Bergen. So do your homework, Simon. And, uh, I was going to take pictures of these menus, but yeah, I didn't really feel that I needed to create that much of a stink. And hopefully people trust me. I have no reason to say that that's the situation if it isn't, uh, whale meat. At this point in our evolution on this planet, it just, it's not okay. It's not okay for me. So um, that's what I have to say to you, Simon. And uh, as I hopefully you heard the beginning of my talk when I said, what a beautiful country it is. Beautiful, breathtaking. Even in 20 below, excuse me, 20 below Arctic Circle cold. Holy moly. That was an experience. Uh, let's see. What else have I got here? Yes, of course, George says the only way to live is in the now. But the now is being redefined for us. I mean, we are experiencing some things that are, I, you know, maybe it's not that way for anyone else. But for me, it's pretty bizarre when time slips to the point that, uh, it's not deja vu. It's somebody seeing you having walked in to a shop 
having asked for the product that you had that you want but you never went in the shop wasn't open and you know so what is this what's happening here is it um did i i'd love to hear your answers here here's here's the question did he what is your i'm having trouble verbalizing it what is your impression here do you think that the guy in the shop popped into the future and saw me but no the answer is no because when he when he popped into the future he he already knew that i i wanted that before i did you know what i'm saying before i even told him that i wanted it so i don't know i do i do love to talk about it i do love the fact that oh my god Look at what we're talking about in 2018, wide open now. And, um, and, and the, oh, thank you, I love you too, Philip. That we're able to talk about these things and have the experiences. It's not just theoretical anymore. This is coming down, baby. So how exciting. And how exciting that this is where the, the council described so succinctly in the new book and then boom it's like when it was coming in when i was channeling that information it, it it really wasn't feeling like it was so imminent or or like in the book they refer to the fourth dimension fluttering over the third and i was like yeah I suppose. fluttering okay and then bam full tilt boom it isn't fluttering it's flooding so pay attention and um oh Raphael do the bane how nice to see you on uh, <laughs> I have a local friend who has plugged in so hope springs eternal the human breath breast not breath okay hold on another message from Simon oh Simon please don't take this all personally of course your country I mean you know Here's Simon's comment. My country, Norway, needs to be visited and not rejection to shed light on what's going on with the whales. I, of course, do not support whale. Where is he? Um, you know, Simon, try to see the bigger picture. I'm not uh, going to pursue this conversation with you about rejecting Norway. I reject any country that uh, kills whales, period. It's my option, <clears throat> especially to eat them. Oh God. Thank you, Daniela. <laughs> right, okay, so where was I before that comment? Well, I, can't, I guess maybe I'm, I've run out of thoughts. Is that possible that I've run out of thoughts? <laughs> Please send your comments and tell me, um, I'm very interested to hear other people's experiences now and to bring those into the foreground where it comes to this sense that we're, that time is slipping or that we're popping out of reality and popping back in. I find this exciting and uh, something very, if we just compare our experiences, keeping it in humility, keeping it non-sensational, Stick, but to compare these experiences and make a compilation of human experience of this phenomena, these phenomena, because I feel that it's going to be speeding up and happening more and more. And we, light workers, very possibly are going to be needing to really help some people who, who aren't understanding it. Do you agree? I ask you this. Sorry, I have two four leggings over here who are snoring. <laughs> I didn't know if you could hear that. Anyway, guys, I've taken up a lot of your time, um, but I did want to, I promised to come to you live, and I just wanted to uh, touch base with you and let you know I'm back to paradise. Oh, you know, some of the locals. Raphael, some of the locals say to me, Patricia, 
please stop promoting the island because um, it's a small place. It's underpopulated. And the locals kind of like it to stay that way. <laughs> so I go, well, I'm not a local, but I am actually now. And, you know, it, it's just so amazing to, to be so grateful to live in such a beautiful place. And the people of, of for all of the people in Fayal who are listening, I love you. I love Azores, but I love the people here. You are innocent and kind and loving and pure. And I'm really grateful that I get to live here with you. So that said, don't forget, guys, I have a um, Return to Atlantis program. I'm pretty much going to have to wrap this up pretty soon, and we don't have very many participants. And that means if you do come on this journey, you're going to have a very small group. With That means a lot of personal time, a lot of private time, and uh, a lot more time in the water with the dolphins because we don't have to accommodate as many people. So please get in touch with me. I'm running out of time to hold the hotel rooms for that. And the dates are May 18th to 25th, 2018. And if you want to see a piece of paradise on the earth, uh, this is the place, Fayal, the Azores. All right, I'm going to sign out now because, I mean, how long can a girl talk with anybody talking back? <laughs> so thank you for tuning in. And um, let me just check if there's anything I missed here. Oh, my. 22 likes. That's my number. My number is 22. <laughs> I had my cabin number was 322. My airline seat was row 22. I you just can't make this stuff up, right? <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for caring about me so much. I really felt the warmth of that. And when I asked you to send healing, you did. And I felt it. And um, I'm grateful always for your love and support. All right, let me see. I just want to see if I can grab my little four-legged to say goodbye. Hey, Scooch. Come and say hello to the people. Come here. There you go. This is Scoochie, my daughter, my daughter. And uh, you hear me talk about her enough, so I thought I'd plug her in. Say hello. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And... Uh, Count on me to be back in the saddle in a few more days and uh, doing readings again and, and back to work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Take good care and feel my love.